Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan, and this is the Halloween edition. Welcome to the Chicago Bears House of Horrors. <laughs> oh, goodness. Matt Nagy, bro, what's going on? Play caller extraordinaire. Mitchell Trubisky down in the dumpster. Let's dive into it. See what the heck is happening in Chicago. Let's get it started. All right, all kidding aside, let's see what the film has to say here. We got the Chicago Bears just imploding at the end of this game against the Chargers. All sorts of bad. Really felt like it just snowballed on Trubisky right here, and it started with this play, in my opinion. Just a chance for a nice, easy completion into the flat, and he they go and get tricky. Matt Nagy trying to Nagy him, thinking he's a mini Andy Reid here, in my opinion. that He had such a great year last year calling plays, scheming guys open, and I feel like this is kind of trying to go one step too far. And really, this is just kind of a little hitch route with a little corner up scissors route. It's really, it's overly complicated. It's too cute, in my opinion. We got extra linemen in the game, all sorts of bad stuff. We'll see it from the All-22 here. And I can't stand the Chicago All-22. feels like we're just in the 10th row. But again, what we're going to get up top is really just a post clear a little hitch by the number two, and then this little corner up thing. And so I don't love, I, I love when people are able to scheme people open, don't get me wrong, but this type of stuff just feels too cute to me. And if it works, great, but if it doesn't, it's really just kind of like an, a, a bizarre way to run smash with this little twirl route, little corner up. And really the throw here is right here. You're going to fake this corner, and then he's going to run this up route. And you're hoping that that corner is cleared out of there with this post but if he doesn't and if he sees it and if he kind of feathers off here right like he does you just can't throw it you got to check it down but because you got extra linemen in the game think and run you want them thinking run thinking downhill but again because there's extra linemen you lose any sort of check down or check flat or anything to pull these people across so really it closes the field and it, to me it's a it's an indication that they just don't trust Trubisky to have full field reads I mean, right here, it's all, they're all outside the numbers. I mean, there's just no, you know, you, you got to be able to throw that hitch right there or you got to feel that corner. As soon as that corner feathers off, you can't throw that ball. Sure, easily set, easier said than done. But again, I just don't love the trick em, dick em element of trying to put three people outside the numbers with a weird little scheme. Yeah, when it works, you're an offensive genius. But right here, the extra offensive lineman in here, at tight end, you know, I got no threat underneath. And geez, he almost gets. Beat at the line of scrimmage too, gapped. But again, a little move in the pocket, love it. But again, closing off the whole field. Everybody's outside the numbers. On the numbers or outside the numbers. That's really tight. There's four defenders out there and just no good places to go with it. To me, this is on Nagy and Trubisky. You can't make that throw, but that type of play calling just shows me a real lack of trust of saying, hey, you just deal with this little part of the field and do the best that you can. Then this is the one throw that I thought really Trubisky just – is a bummer and would love to have back. Just this little four vertical, number three across the field. He's wide open, running against a linebacker, running against an old linebacker. Now, granted, he can roll still, but he's wide open, NFL standards. He's wide open, any standards. You got to give your receiver a chance down the field to make this play. There's just no way around it. Running wide open. Linebacker's got his back to him, like he's not even there. All he's covering is the width of his shoulders, and we are missing that by five yards. Gosh, that is a brutal miss. And when you start compiling those type of interceptions with these type of misses, that's how you start getting everybody talking about your job status. And so then you come in from the all 22 here. We're able to see it again. Again, this is just a variation of four verticals. We're going to run out up top or a corner, but this is just four verticals and that's wide open. You're going to read the middle field player in four verticals. So again, we're just reading that middle field safety, whatever he does, he can't be right. So right here, he's going to feather to the number two right here. We got four verticals right here. One, two, and then the number three usually runs a post because the tight split up top will get a corner or an out. But this is just four verticals across the board here. With the middle field player, you're going to read him. He can't be right. He feathers to number two. Here's the number two. Here's the number three. He's going to have all this space to be able to go in there and run. You got to give your guy a chance. There's just no way around it. This is a brutal miss. And these type of misses are just compound all the issues. I mean, he's running wide open. That's basically uncovered by NFL standards. And you don't give him a chance to make a play. It's one thing to th under throw the ball. It's another thing to not give your guy a chance down the field. But against a linebacker, 
with our speedsters on the perimeter, we got to give those guys chances. Again, this is a beautiful play call. This is great, nice pass pro. Everything is good. This is you got to make this throw. You you have to make that throw to be able to be a consistent winning starter in the NFL for a long time. Then you compound this the very next play, and this is really the scariest one for me. Not because of necessarily what happens, but because the concept. So you miss that wide open, four verticals, easy throw. Not easy throw, but easy read. Got to give your guy a chance. Then you come back and they call Scat Hank. Now, I'm not going to lie. I can't remember ever seeing this play called outside of a preseason week four or five. Uh, this is the ultimate kind of middle finger to me from an offensive coordinator, a head coach, to a quarterback saying, I trust you so little that we will call Scat Hank in an NFL game. And basically what all that is is there's going to be a little sit route over the ball, two hooks, and two flats. It doesn't get easier than this. This is the first play put in on any sort of like anything to do with a West Coast offense in the NFL. So it doesn't matter what the personnel is. They run it out of 8 billion different ways to do it. But this will sit right over the ball, five yards. He's the first read no matter what. Then we have two hooks by the number one receivers. And then we have flat routes by the number two. It can be flats or little wides if you're from the backfield or swing routes. Well, the read here is always one stick and then two hook. And let me teach you the read here. It's a little unique. It's not just one to two. It's one whoever takes this away. So these two defenders, and it doesn't get easier. Let me also tell you, it doesn't get easier than playing this against cover three. So whatever of these two defenders right here takes this sit away that's the side you read the hook to so for instance if he were to sit right here and drive this tight end you would then come over here and work this hook flat if it was the opposite and this defender up top sat on the tight end which is more likely you would then come up here and run that flat hook but again it's cover three straight up easy cover three one two three four three deep Three people deep, four people underneath. It doesn't get an easier concept to read and throw. You have to be able to complete this every day, all the time, even if you want to make a team. If you want to be the fourth quarterback on a roster, you have to be able to place this play. You catch it, one, two, three, put it on the tight end. He's wide open. He's open. Put it on him. There's no doubt about it. You see, and then whatever linebacker squeezes to that sit, that's where you go with the hook. Because if he squeezes and vacates the hook area, you can then throw the hook. Pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't get easier than that. At any level, this is the most disturbing play for me. And it's not because he fumbled it or the ball security or Bosa beasting him. It's this idea that they called this in a game and he couldn't do it. There are no quarterback. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I never, I can't remember ever seeing this over the course of my near decade in the league where they, someone called Scat Hank in a game. And then you got to be able to throw it. I mean, he's wide. It's wide open. There is no other read. He's already off of him. You can see his eyes right here. You got to th you got to throw this. He gets off of him early right there, before he even turns. Then he's blasted. Then he's ball security. All sorts of bad. Again, it was a bummer for Mitch Trubisky, no doubt about it. But it's not just on Trubisky. He certainly needs to make those throws, especially the four vertical throw and the scat Hank is just ridiculous. But Matt Nagy needs to find a way to get back to scheming him open to do the things that he was really good at last year. Running the ball, get on the perimeter, scramble up the field, make it really simple. I mean, it doesn't get more simple than scat Hank. But I mean, you just want to find a way for the guy to get some sort of rhythm and not feel like everything is so difficult, whether it's the screen game, check downs, really simple, easy reads and not things that were tricking people, running people in all different sorts of twist routes, find ways to get him a completion. But he did those last two, the four verticals, easy. Scat Hank doesn't get easier. So yes, Mitch Trubisky's He's in that terror mode right now. There's definitely a house of horrors right now in Chicago. So we'll see what happens, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Have a great Halloween. See you next time.